right. Welcome, everybody, as you come in from the waiting room there. Thanks for joining us on this Monday afternoon for Knitting in the Round featuring the Team USA hat. Darren there on the screen is showing you his pattern and his hat in progress there. Trying it on with the needle still on. Hope he doesn't lose any stitches. <laughs> uh, if you do have any questions during the course of the class, please just go ahead and type them in the Zoom chat box. I'll be there answering questions directly or forwarding them on to Darren. And I will also be putting both the instructions for the hat and a handout for the class into the chat as well there, if you didn't get those in your class confirmation email. And as a reminder, this class is being recorded. So you'll be able to watch this back starting tomorrow afternoon sometime on the Michaels website at michaels.com slash classes. And with all of that out of the way, I'm going to let Darren take over. Okay, welcome to class. Today, we're going to learn how to knit um, this hat. It's a free knitting pattern from Lion Brand. It's available on lionbrand.com and also on michaels.com. And once you learn how to knit a hat in the round with this method, which is just a, a very basic, simple method, um, you'll be able to make almost any hat that's called for knitting in the round. So you can take these skills and apply them to many other projects. You can make um, like sweaters, sweater sleeves, the body of a sweater. You can make a cowl. You can make um, gloves. You can do all kinds of things once you learn how to knit in the round and practice a little bit. So this is a great skill for you to master and then to apply to other um, projects and then learn more and more about it as you go. So it's a wonderful thing for you to know. Um, if we want to switch the view to the view of my hands, we'll go ahead and get started with all of the fun things we're going to learn. Okay, today, today I am using um, this yarn in class. It's called Heartland, and this is a yarn by Lion Brand Yarn. Um, it's also available on lionbrand.com or michaels.com. There's lots and lots of colors. So almost any kind of color you want, you should be able to find something you like in this line of yarn. There's so many great colors available. It is a number four yarn, which means it's a medium weight or worsted weight yarn. Um, it has two um, 51 yards, so lots and lots of yards. This yarn calls for a size nine knitting needle kind of see that, a nine knitting needle or a 5.5. But if you have an eight or maybe you can try a 10, um, depending on if you're a loose or a tight knitter, you can probably make it work, but it does call for a nine. It's acrylic, so it's washable and dryable, very easy care. So I, I really do like this yarn quite a bit. And then the pattern that we're looking at today, and there's also information about gloves in the pattern, but we're not, we're not doing that. We're just doing the hat. So for the hat, you need, um, it's an easy plus pattern, one size fits all. You need one ball of um, Lion Brand Heartland yarn. The original pattern called for Olympic, which is a blue, but of course, feel free to use your favorite color. Um, double pointed needle size eight. So this is actually calling for a size eight. So one size smaller than what the yarn was calling for, which is fine. Circular knitting needles, size 16, um, I'm sorry, 16 inches, size eight. Um, Lion, um, you need some stitch markers and large eyed blunt needles for weaving in your ends, okay? So let's look at um, circular needles. So if you're going to be using circular needles, you're gonna start thinking about two different types of measurements. So this is a US eight, if we can see it on there. It's a US eight, doesn't really show up on the camera, but that's talking about how thick the needle is going around this direction. So how thick it is, but it's also um, 16 inches long. And that's 16 inches from the tip all the way around to the other tip. So that's two different ways of measuring the needles. Um, very important when you're knitting in the round that you get the right size length. The right size length is very important because if you were to get a longer one, like a 40 inch needle or a 32 inch needle, and you're trying to knit a circle, 
the problem is, is you can't make a circle smaller than what, than what the needles are. So if the needles are 16 inches round, you can't really go much smaller than 16 inches. You can kind of stretch your stitches around it to make it work, but it's not a very nice experience to knit that and it's not gonna work very well. And um, you can really only, like if I wanted to stretch my stitches all the way around here and stretch them really tight, I might be able to knit a circle that was maybe 14 inches around, but just a little bit smaller than my needles. So you wanna make sure you're getting the right size needle. So if it calls for a 16 inch, um, that's what you're going to need because most people's heads are only um, like 19 to 22 or 24 inches depending on like how thick your hair is so you don't want to make a hat that's that's way too big so you want to make sure you're getting the right size needle um, and the pattern will tell you that it'll think about that for you now of course there are other ways of knitting in the round um, you can use a method called magic loop which you would use um, a very long, long needle, like a 40 inch needle to make a small tube, but that's a, that's a whole different class. Um, we're not gonna get into magic loop today, but I do like people to know about all the options that are available. So if you wanna go on for some like future learning, like some personal research, um, you can look up magic loop and see what, um, what you think about that, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is refer to my pattern and it's telling me with circular needles cast on 80 stitches. So that's pretty easy. So let's review the cast on. I'm going to review a slip knot. So lay out your yarn, make a loop like this, put your hand in the center of the loop you're gonna reach under one strand of yarn, grab hold of the tail, and then hold the tail and your working yarn together and then pull it back. And that makes a slip knot. And there are lots of different ways of tying a slip knot. Um, this is just one way. So if you know how to tie a slip knot a different way, perfectly fine. This is just another way of doing it. Always more options are available. And then you're just gonna pop that on your needle and cinch it up. You don't want it too tight. It should slide, you know, loosely, but you know, kind of snug at the same time. All right, now it wants me to cast on 80 stitches. So I'm gonna show you how to do the cast on. So the cast on is that I'm gonna use is very much like the knit stitch. So you enter the stitch like you're gonna knit, enter the stitch, wrap your yarn, bring the loop through. And then when you, we're not doing the knit stitch, we're doing a cast on. So we're going to put this needle, uh, I'm sorry, the stitch that's on the right side onto the left hand needle, but we have to put it on backwards. So we're gonna kind of twist it and pick it up from the back side. And that's the knitted on cast on. So enter the stitch, wrap the yarn. But you could certainly use the like the long tail cast on or if you like a different cast on it's probably fine to use whichever cast on you like. Um, it just says to cast on it doesn't tell you how to cast on so it's pretty much an open choice for that. Any questions about casting on. Nope, doing okay. All right, so cast on 80. So I have this sample worked up with my cast on finished. Okay. So cast on 80. So it's done. This is a, just a different yarn that I had for a different class I taught. And now we're going to join in the round. So joining in the round, it's very easy to do, but you do have to be careful and watch out for a few steps. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our project out like this, and we're gonna look and see what we have. We wanna make sure that our working yarn is coming from the right-hand side, okay? So the working yarn should be coming from your right-hand side. And then you wanna look at these um, cast on stitches, you can kind of see how this 
is forming like an edge, you want to make sure that this edge is laying straight all the way across and it isn't twisted. So I'm twisting mine just so you can kind of see. Um, it should lay straight. So if you see any twists in it like this, you can see how it's twisting here. Um, you want to untwist it. Untwist it. Make sure. Um, I like to make my stitches all face the inside, but it doesn't really matter as long as they're all facing the same way and not twisted. Okay. All right. So my working yarn is coming from the right, and my stitches are not twisted. Very important thing. If your stitches are twisted, um, and you continue to knit in the round with uh, twisted stitches, your hat will never be shaped like a tube, really. It'll be shaped more like a Mobius or like it'll have like a twist built into the hat and you'll never really be able to close it up and make a hat. So it's very important to make sure that it's not twisted, okay? And because I have my working yarn coming from the right, the very first stitch that I make is going to join my work so that I'm knitting in the round. So I'm going to knit one stitch. And now we're going to check and see. So you can see right there that it's joined, right? And you're going to continue to knit, um, do like knit one, knit two, purl two all the way around. And you're going to, you can see right there that it's joined. Now let me show you. Sometimes it's nice to see something done the wrong way so you can understand what's going on, okay? So now my working yarn is on my left. So if you start with your working yarn on your left, you can still knit, you can still start. So I'm gonna knit two. And I'm gonna check and see if I joined or not. And as you can see, I did not join. So I did not join in the round. And so what will happen if I continue here? It's not such a bad thing. I'll do my knit two, purl two ribbing all the way around. And when I get here, when I get to the end, it's not going to be joined. But then the very next stitch, if I continue in the round, I will join it. So it will end up being joined. But the one thing you'll have is you'll have a bigger gap rate where, where you join it. So if you knit one whole row first and then join it when you come back around, you'll end up with a bigger gap. But that's not such a problem either because you've got your tail and you can use your tail to um, kind of sew, when you weave in your tail, you can sew that little gap shut. So that's fine. And sometimes people do actually find it easier to knit one round flat. So just go ahead and knit one round and not join. Um, because then you can, it's easier to tell if you have a twist in your yarn. Um, with big yarn like this, it's not so hard to tell, but if you have um, little tiny sock yarn, and say you weren't making a hat, you were making something very large, and you cast on 200 stitches, sometimes it's hard to tell if you have a twist. So um, sometimes people do like to knit one row and then join in the round. So it's up to you um, how you want to do it, as long as you understand kind of like what's going on and why. Any questions? Any questions at all? Doing okay? Okay, so let's review ribbing real quick. So we're going to knit two. And then to purl two, remember you have to bring your yarn forward in between your needles. And then we purl two. And then to knit two again, you have to bring it between your needles, bring it forward, and then knit two. And you work all the way around like that. So we all understand how to knit ribbing, correct? No questions? Quick question. When you're working in the round, the working yarn is always on the right hand needle. Um, 
when when you're working in the round, if your very first stitch is on the right when you join, or when you start knitting, that will make it so that you join. But um, it's pretty much the same. Like my working yarn's coming from my right needle, but that's pretty much how it is when you're knitting round or flat, isn't it, Claire? Unless you are some magical person who can knit backwards, yes. Yeah. Um, I can't, I used to be able to do that actually, but I don't remember how now. Now's not the time to demonstrate that. Yeah, so the, the working yarn usually should all, I mean, there's always an exception, but usually the working yarn is coming from your right hand needle. And working in the round, when we laid it out flat before we started, um, if the working yarn was coming from the right, that just ensured that we joined our round before um, you know, as we started, we joined the round with the knit, first knit stitch we did. Does that make sense? Is that confusing? Any questions about knitting in the round or joining in the round or how to knit ribbing? Anyone need a review? How, when you're knitting in the round, how do you know when you've ended a round? Oh, shoot, I forgot. See, I forgot to do that. So one thing the pattern, I think it tells us to do, um, it wants us to place a marker for the beginning of the round. So that will tell us um, when we started, when we started. So you just pop that marker on there before you start. And my working yarn is on the right. My yarn is not twisted. Double check, looks good. And now I'm ready to start. Yeah, so do place, I don't always place that marker because usually you can look and see where your tail is and that will tell you where you started. But um, it is nice to have that marker there to let you know exactly where your beginning and end is. Okay, anything else that I missed, Claire? Oh, I meant to catch you. We did have a request for how to join those stitches together, how to join in the round. Okay. Well, there's really no way. There's really it, there's really nothing happening special or unusual. All you do, and sometimes that's the way it is because it's, um, you think there's some kind of a special trick or some kind of a thing, like what's that thing that he's doing that I'm missing or what's going on that I, I'm not seeing. There's really nothing to see, or there's really nothing going on. All, all you're doing is you cast on like normal and you make sure your stitches are not twisted. This is the trick where you, the only thing here that's different is you wanna make sure that your working yarn is in the right hand side. So my working yarn is in my right hand and then my left hand um, there is no working yarn. So that's that's what you want to make sure. Just double check that. And then the first stitch you make, and it's just, just a normal knit stitch, joins it because it's taking that working yarn from the right side and bringing it to that left side. So if you think, you, well, I'm not sure what he's doing or I'm not sure what I'm missing, there's really nothing to miss. There's nothing, there's nothing special. Just have your working yarn on you're right and make that first stitch and then you will be joined. And then if you wanna double check and make sure that you're really joined, try to separate them and there should be that um, strand of yarn connecting them right there. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. And then you just continue on with your ribbing or whatever your pattern is instructing you to do. You can do anything, anything you want at this point. Okay. okay, let's just look back at our pattern and see what's happening. So place marker for the beginning of the round. Join by working the first stitch on the left-hand needle with the working yarn from the right-hand needle. So they're just, just what I was saying, make sure the working yarn is coming from the right-hand needle and begin being careful not to twist your stitches. So just always double check that you did not twist your stitches. 
And here's a little um, secret. So when you join it, you're only connected by one strand of yarn. So when you go all the way around and you get to the end of your round, when you come to slip your stitch marker, stop right there double check and make sure that your stitches are not twisted because sometimes they could twist in your hand and sometimes maybe you didn't have it right at the beginning. But because it's only connected by one strand of yarn, when you very first do that first round, you have one last chance. So when you get around to your stitch marker, before you knit that next stitch to join the second time in the round, double check it and make sure everything's right. If it's twisted, you can still untwist it because it's only connected by that one strand of yarn. And then after you knit that second round, after you start the second round, now it's joined by two strands of yarn and you're not gonna be able to twist it or untwist it. So once you start that second round, you're kind of locked into place, either right or wrong. So um, before you start that second round, make sure that everything is perfect and it didn't get twisted in your hand. So that's just a little pointer that I like to tell people to double check for that. Um, so after, so we do our first round, um, we're going to work in knit two, purl two in the round until the piece measures about five and a half inches from the beginning. And you'll just, I'll show you how to measure that here in a few minutes. And then we're going to change to stockinette stitch and we're going to work in the round. We're going to knit every round until the piece measures about eight and a half inches. Okay. So I worked up this little piece of a swatch to just kind of show you. So I'm working in the round. I'm doing my knit two, purl two rib. So knit two, purl two. So you just keep going. I'm almost to the end. See, I didn't put a stitch marker, but because I have this tail, I know exactly where I'm going to end. So that's just kind of the way I do it, but it, it is nice to have a stitch marker um, so you know exactly where that end is. But if you forget to put the stitch marker, again, it's not the end of the world. We can usually work these things out, right? Okay, so I'm finishing my round and it says to knit it until it's five and a half inches. So clearly this is not five and a half inches. This is just, um, let's see what it is. Let me show you how to measure. So to measure it though, you wanna put, you're gonna include your, your cast on. So you're gonna take it right to the very edge of your work. And then you're gonna measure it. You don't wanna push down hard on it because that kind of splays it out and kind of distorts it. So you want to kind of just let it rest and kind of relax and then measure it. And I would call this about one and a fourth. Claire, do you measure it clear up to the very edge of that last stitch, that loop that's still on the wire? Or somebody told me to measure halfway in between that. What do you do? I sort of measure about halfway up that last stitch. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're, a, you know, an eighth or a quarter of an inch off for a hat, it's going to be okay. Yeah. So this is either like one and a fourth or one and sixteenth. So um, that's how you measure it. And again, if, if you're a little bit off here or there, almost in any project, it should be fine. Like, I don't think knitting, I don't think it's ever that crucial, is it? Like, um, it could be though, I guess. But anyway, one thing I do want to tell you, it's just because the pattern says to knit five and a half inches um, of ribbing, Maybe you don't like to knit ribbing, or maybe you don't like the way ribbing looks. You can certainly not knit five and a half inches, but I would recommend knitting at least like an inch or an inch and a half of ribbing just so that it lays flat and it doesn't curl, okay? So I'm not gonna knit five and a half inches of ribbing because I don't like to be told what to do. I'm gonna do what I wanna do, it's my hat, so. I'm gonna to switch to stockinette stitch. Now, switching to stockinette stitch is very easy. Um, I'm just gonna review what stocking, that stockinette stitch is for you. So knitting in the round though, it is a little, let me put this on here just for sake of argument. So knitting in the round is a little different than knitting flat. So when you knit flat, you knit stockinette stitch, you knit 
all on one side, and then you purl all on the other side. But what you're actually doing is you're, you're putting all of your knits on one side of your work and you're putting all of your purls on the other side of your work. So that's the theory. That's what's really happening. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that knitting in the round because it's a, little, it's a little different, but really it's not different. So when you're knitting in the round, you're gonna start knitting for your stockinette stitch. And what's gonna happen is you're soon gonna realize that even though you're turning your work kind of in a circle, you're never actually looking at the back of your work. You're always looking at the front of your work because it's moving in a circle, right? So when we're knitting flat, I don't have any flat knitting, but when you're knitting flat, you go across and then you turn your work and you go back across. You're knitting on the back and then you're knitting on the front. But when you're knitting in the round, you're always only just looking at the front. So stockinette stitch in the round is going to be just knit stitches. So all you're gonna do is just knit, knit, knit. You don't have to do any more purls um, on this hat to make stockinette stitch in the round. But what you're doing, it's basically still the same thing because you're putting all of your knit stitches on one side and all of your purl stitches on the other side. Okay, does that make sense or is that confusing? Sometimes it's confusing until you do it yourself. So I can show you this hat that I have worked up. And these are the dreaded double pointed needles everyone's afraid of, but we don't have to be afraid of those. Let me show you how to use them. So stockinette stitch in the round. So here I've been working on stockinette stitch in the round. Um, so you're just doing knit stitches all the way around. You're going round and round on your knit stitches. No. Could you show us stitches. what? Could you show us what the inside of the hat looks like there? I was just gonna. That was my next uh -huh. turn. So all of these are knit stitches. Okay, we know what our knit stitches are. So if we look at the inside, um, these are our purl stitches. So if you knit a, like a baby blanket or a, a scarf or just a, like a washcloth and you're doing stockinette stitch flat, one side is gonna look like this and one side is gonna look like this. So pretty much you're, it's the same idea, but you're just achieving that idea in a different way because you're doing it in a different way. So just remember for stockinette stitch, you're always putting your knits on, on one side your knits always go on the right, on the proper side, on the right side, and your purl stitches go on the wrong side or the inside. And if you change it, then it's reverse stockinette with the purls on the outside. And sometimes that's a cute look, but all of the knit stitches are on one side, all of the purl stitches are on the other side. And with knitting in the round, you're just going round and round, round and it's more like a big spiral for knitting. Right, Claire? It is, yeah, because your your stitches are never meeting exactly. They're sort of in a continuous spiral, like what is it, like the inside of the Guggenheim? <laughs> yeah, and if you if you knit stripes, then you'll see that very clearly and be very dismayed and upset about it. But there are some ways around that later on to help with that. So here I finished my round. Here I split my yarn. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Okay, so any questions about stockinette stitch in the round or anything we've covered yet? These are all pretty, I mean, once you know how to do it, it's all really easy, but you know, learning each step um, is kind of, it kind of builds on itself. Okay, any questions? I would just say, and I don't know if you, I don't think we pointed this out, that when you set up to knit in the round, you want your needle tips to be closest to you and the cord to be farthest from you. Because when I first knit in the round, I did it the other way around. Oh, and so I was knitting way. basically inside out. <laughs> oh, hmm. Yeah, so, Which, I mean, it's not gonna ruin anyone's life though, right? Did it ruin your life? No, it totally works. You just end up knitting the whole thing inside out. For a hat, it's probably going to get a little tricky when it comes to close it. Um, but I was making leg warmers, so. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so um, instead of holding it like this, where um, you know the, the 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 open end of the hat and then the cord for the wires, the wire for the um, needles is facing close to me, and the needles are farther away, you would. This is maybe the more correct way or the easier, the more traditional way. I don't like to say any way is really wrong unless if it's, it's like actually a bad, bad way. But um, this is probably the more traditional way where the needles are closest to you and then the, the ring or the, the other part of the knitting is farther away. Make sense? Okay, that's what she was saying. Let's look now at our pattern again. All right, so what happened was knit for five and a half inches, and then we're going to knit stockinette stitch until it's eight and a half inches. And so this hat is actually nine inches. So um, maybe I was watching TV or I wasn't paying attention, and I knit it nine inches instead of eight and a half. That's gonna be perfectly fine because it's not gonna bother me a bit. Um, I will caution you though, sometimes when you have what seems like a lot to knit, like if it says knit eight inches or knit 10 inches or even three or four inches, you think, oh, that's gonna take a long time. That's gonna take forever. And then you just start pushing through and you just keep knitting, 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 and you're just gonna push through and get it done. Um, sometimes you'll go a lot farther than you think because um, it really, works up pretty fast some, you know, so you want to stop and measure, you know, periodically. Like I, I might think to myself, oh, I don't want to stop and measure again. You don't want to measure every like quarter inch, but you know, sometimes it's better to measure, you know, a little too often. Um, sometimes if you go too far, it will make a big deal on your project, but I probably wouldn't let a half of an inch bother me. Claire, would you take that half inch out or would you leave it? Not for a hat, but if it was a different type of project, it would probably matter more. Yeah, if it were a sweater or something, it might matter a lot more. If your arm was a half inch too long or something, it might not. Or if you're making one side of one thing and another side of another thing and one half inch longer than the other side, that might be a big problem too. So, you know, you have to decide, you know, how big of a deal it is for you. And so once we knit until it's eight and a half inches from the beginning. We're gonna start with the crown shaping, so the top of the hat. And we're gonna be decreasing the top of the hat um, in a smooth way um, so that it's not like, sometimes if you don't decrease at the top and you just kind of gather it, it looks really kind of bunched up at the top and that's fine. Um, it usually kind of looks like this where you can see See, it's just kind of been gathered and pulled tight. And that's one style of making it. But today we're going to learn a different style um, where we are going to be um, doing decreases. And let me show you a little bit about that. So, so it's telling us here um, to knit eight, knit two together. See that on there. Knit eight, knit two together, and repeat from the asterisk to the end of the round. You'll have 72 stitches at the end of this round. And then the next round, you're just going to knit. And it wants you to change to the double pointed needles as follows. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm going to question their choice of when to do it. So I usually don't switch to double pointed needles until I probably would get down maybe halfway into my decreasing process because you can stay on your 16 inch circulars for quite a while until it starts to become unpleasant to work with. And you'll feel when like you don't have enough stitches to really go around that 16 inch circle comfortably. And I'll usually wait until then to change to my double pointed needles because I actually like double pointed needles. I don't mind them but I don't love them. And I would rather like work on my 16 inch circulars as long as I can without going to the double points. What do you think, Claire? What do you, when do you change to double points? I typically use the same method. Like once there are not enough stitches to go around the circular needle comfortably. Yeah, most people really don't like double points very much. So 
there's no reason to switch to them prematurely. Um, you know, it's, a, it's hard to guess like when, but probably about like at least down to here when you're knitting four and knit two together or knitting five and knit two together, you might want to, I would just wait until it feels necessary. Honestly, that's the best way to know. So I'm going to stay on my, for now, I'm going to stay on my um, um, 16 inch circulars. And so here's another thing I want to show you. It says knit eight, knit two together. So one, let's see, here's my beginning. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So knit eight and then knit two together. And for the knit two together, very easy. You want to, um, usually if you're gonna knit, you'll go through here, but for knit two together, you're gonna go in the second stitch, go through both stitches, wrap your yarn, and then just pull that stitch through both loops. Okay, do you guys want to see that again or do you know how to do that already? You want to see it again? No? We're good? It's pretty easy. Um, and then what it does not tell you to do, but what I always do and I really like doing is I really like a stitch marker. And I will go ahead and put a stitch marker there. And then what happens later on is once I get it set up with my stitch markers, I don't have to count. I don't have to count knit seven, knit two together, knit five, knit two together. I don't have to go through that. All I have to do is just knit until I get to my stitch marker or like two stitches before my stitch marker and then knit those two together. It makes life a lot easier. You don't have to keep track. You're not like wondering. Um, you're not trying to see, did I knit two together here? Where was it down? You know, it's just so easy to keep track. Do you do it that way, Claire, or do you just, count? Do you like the number, the counting method? Uh, it depends on how many decreases there are around the hat. I think if there are a lot of decreases, it's somehow easier to see them. But if you're only decreasing in like four points around the hat, then I'll probably use a marker because otherwise I'll forget to decrease. Okay. I always use the marker. Always like to have a stitch marker. And just pop another stitch marker on there. You just kind of drop it on your needle. Whoops, I did it wrong. So I knitted my eight, knit two together. So follow the instructions it's giving you. Knit two together and then pop that stitch marker right on there. And then you know when you come back around when it's time to do, do the decrease again. And then let's see, knit eight. I'm not sure why this stitch marker was here. I'm just gonna take that out for now. And then when you come to the stitch marker, let's just pretend it was time to come to my next stitch marker. All you do to transfer it over is you just take it from one needle to the other, or you can take it off with your hand and put it over, or you just slip it over. Somehow when I first started knitting, I used to end up, instead of slipping it over, sometimes I would actually knit it into my work. Did you ever do that, Claire? Now it seems so stupid, it seems so silly. But I don't think I ever did that. No, my, my that knitting couple, in the round mistake was knitting inside out. <laughs> yeah, I did that a couple times with stitch markers. And then if you have a stitch marker like this, which is just a solid circle, you either have to cut it out or leave it. And then now it's a bead or a decoration or, you know, rip back and take it out that way. But that's one reason why I really started liking these that open and close like a little safety pin. Because if you do end up knitting them in, I actually did that a couple of times. And looking back, like, I don't, I don't know why I did that. But um, if anyone else makes that mistake, if you have these open kind, you can take them out easy enough. So, so that's how I like to set mine up. So 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then knit two together. Pop the stitch marker on and then continue. Okay. Now let's just pretend for the sake of argument that um, I finished my round and I finished my round and now it's time to switch to my double pointed needles. And what's going to happen is you're going to like right now you can see I have plenty of stitches to go all the way around. So it's very comfortable to knit. But what would happen would be um, if you didn't have enough stitches, like if I'd already done all my decreases, it's going to start to look like this where the stitches are really kind of stretched around. And you can actually end up kind of distorting your work if you keep stretching it out like that and your fabric might not lay nice. Or it really just starts to become unpleasant to knit that way because they're they're gonna get kind of hung up on this, this, this edge and it's not just, it's not a nice experience. So once you start seeing that they're kind of getting stretched out a little bit, then it's time to switch to your double pointed needles. And then the easiest way to do that is usually with double pointed needles, uh, they come in a pack of five, but I usually work with four and just kind of keep that other one on reserve in case if I lose one. But you just pick up your double pointed needle and you pick up your other needle and just kind of tuck this one out of the way. and. Just for a little while, you're going to be working with two different types of needles. So you're going to knit directly on from your um, circulars directly onto your double point like this. And that's the easiest way to do it. And you want to maybe count how many stitches you have before you start and then kind of space them as evenly as possible on, on your double points. So and then just pop that on there. So if you have, let's say you have 40 stitches and you want to divide that into three, um, three double points, of course it doesn't work out evenly, but you know, you could put um, like 10 on one, 15 on one and 15 on the other one or something like that, just so that they're spaced out, you know, roughly even, like you don't have to, it doesn't have to be evenly spaced 100%. If you have like 31 stitches, you could do 10, 10 and 11, or, you know, it doesn't make, it's not gonna make a big deal really. Okay, so that is how you transfer to your double points. Any questions about that or anything else we've talked about? Here, so I have them for my next demonstration, whenever that is. All right, and so now I've made it here. And I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about working with the double pointed needles. Has anyone worked with double points before or maybe been nervous about it? So when you're working with double points, um, it comes in a pack of five, but I usually work with four and you can do all five if you would rather. Um, you set it up like this, basically it's shaped like a triangle. So you've got three needles holding your work. And then I have my stitch markers spaced out so I know when to do my decreases. And then this is my working needle. So you always have one extra one for working. And when you're putting your stitch markers in place, you know, I have this like little rubber one and then I have this like a little clip and I have a couple of different kinds, but then I have this big blue one, which is different than all the other ones. And it's kind of unique. So it's marking my center. So I always know that's where my center is um, or my beginning, my beginning and my end because I use a different stitch marker. And if I didn't have a different one, if I just had like another one like this one, sometimes what I'll do then is put 
I'll, I'll go ahead and lock this one down and kind of put two of them there. I'll kind of do that. And then I know that's where my beginning is. But you want to make that one a little bit different somehow so that you know where your beginning is. Um, if you have, like, you could do all of them yellow and put a blue in there or something. But whatever, whatever's going to indicate the beginning for you, you just want to make sure you do that. So with double-pointed needles, and you don't want to do it be Quick too- Quick question on the stitch markers there in. Okay. Because if you're going to have, you know, a stitch marker every eight stitches or whatever, what happens when that stitch marker needs to go at the end of the double-pointed needle? So it's well, going to fall right off. You just don't let it. Um, if, if that starts to happen, then see, like you can see right here, this was um, eight, in, eight stitches right here when I first set this up. This stitch should have been over here. And of course, then that's going to fall off. So I just borrowed one and put it over there. So that way you'll always know that it's not going to fall off because you'll always, and if it, somehow it gets to that point where you you just borrow one from the next needle and put over there, and then that way it won't fall off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Also, um, like those point protectors that fit over the tips of the needle and stick it at the end. You're going to take it off each time you go around, but if you want to put a stitch marker there, that might be one way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have yeah. any with me to show, but they do make them um, and they 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 just kind of pop right on the end of your needle. It's like a like a little looks like a little eraser, like a little rubbery or a little plasticky thing. Sometimes they are shaped like I had some that were shaped like little socks or sometimes they can be really cute, but usually they're just like a piece of rubber, like an eraser. Um, you know, they're they're very functional. They're really nice. But of course, it's fun when things are decorative, too. So. Um, I don't really use them as much as I, when I first started double points, I lived by them, but I really don't find that I need them as much now. So, but let me show you how to do this. So to start with my new um, needle, and one problem we look at when we have double pointed is sometimes we, where we have the needle separation, sometimes the stitches along this line will get a little bit loose and you'll end up with a ladder, a laddering effect. And one way to avoid that is um, when you knit that first stitch, you're gonna pull it a little tighter than you normally would, but not extreme. Like you're not gonna get crazy about it. And then the second one, I tend to pull that one a little, just a little more snug than normal. And that will usually take care of any um, of the laddering that you have, okay? And now I'm getting to the stitch marker um, and I know I have to knit two together. And I don't know where I left off in the pattern. Uh, I was working on this last night, but I don't have to go back and count because I know when I get to my stitch marker, knit two together. So go around. So now I'm just knitting like normal. Um, people see you knitting with four knitting needles and they think it's very exciting or something crazy is happening. But remember, you're only knitting with two of them at a time. The other ones are just resting. So there's knit two together, slip my marker, and then keep on knitting. And what happens is, so I've knit all my stitches off of that needle. Now this needle becomes my free needle. That's my new working needle. This one was my working needle. Now it's holding these stitches. And then you just turn your work and you start with the next one. Okay. So knit these together, pull it really tight. And one thing you can also do, instead of pulling it tight, if you're finding you're getting ladders, you can, um, you, you can, um, Instead of using your new needle, what you can do is you can knit a stitch or two like this. So you're kind of shifting them from one needle to the other. And then that way you don't get that ladder going straight up. It, you can kind of space it out a little bit and then that slack will even out on its own after a while. And then 
I'm going to combine the two together because my stitch marker is there. Do you ever have problems getting ladders, Claire? Um, I did when I first started using double pointed needles, and then as you you know as you get used to it, those sort of go away. Um, but speaking of laddering, if you discover that it happens, you know, after you're well along your way in your decreases, is there any way to go back and fix it after the fact? Well, that kind of depends on how bad it actually is. If um, usually it's not so bad. And basically what you can do is see the thing about knitted fabric is the fabric really wants to be even. So it, the tension really is trying to be very, very even. And if you have those ladders, what that means is you have a little bit of an extra loose tension right there. And over time, what's going to happen is that loose tension is going to kind of distribute out through the rest of the row and it will even out on its own eventually. And so what you can do to kind of help speed that up is um, just kind of, you know, jiggling it around and stretching it a little bit, you know, gently, not too crazy. Um, if you get it wet, if you wash it and let it dry, then a lot of times then it will um, even out. You'll be quite surprised how much of that will even out with just getting wet or getting it dry, but, and then letting it dry. But if it's really extreme, like if it's super, like if it looks something like that, like if it were really, really extreme, then you might want to just kind of un unknit it and redo it. What do you think, Claire? How would you fix it? I would probably try blocking first. I feel like for many knitters, there's the great hope that that will just block right out. That'll be fine. <laughs> and it usually, it surprisingly, it usually does. Don't you think, don't you find, or? It does. And after, you know, the hat is off the needles and those stitches aren't being, you know, held in place, you can wiggle the fabric around a lot more and sort yeah, of, you know, kind of... flop the hat back and forth. And that will help even yeah. things out as well. And if you have one that's just really awful, um, sometimes if you take like a darning needle, um, you can kind of go across the row like this and kind of re help redistribute some of that loose tension like this, which is a very tedious job. But sometimes you can, if you have a couple that are just really loose and they, they don't seem to be, um, what you wanna do is you wanna redistribute that loose tension. So you can kind of go across the row and you know, kind of bring it that way a little bit. I don't know if anyone's ever snagged a sweater, like a store-bought sweater, and you wanna work that snag back in, that's kind of how you do it. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Uh, sort of a question on the double points, going back to when you first started using them. Do you remember how many stitches you put on each needle for this hat, or how do you decide how to divide those? Um, I just kind of do it evenly. I will tell you that when I was um, knitting this sample, I did do it when the pattern told me to, like, I'm not sure why I was just kind of following the pattern. Sometimes I get it in my mind, okay, I'm teaching a class, I'm gonna do exactly as the pattern says, because usually I don't, usually I'll just like glance at the pattern and be like, I'm gonna do whatever I want. But you know, when I'm teaching, I like to kind of follow the pattern a little bit more. So I was doing that and then I thought, you know, I don't even want my students to do it this way. So I'm gonna make sure I tell them. So there were 80 stitches, so, I just spaced it out, you know, I kind of divided 80 by three and put, you know, certain amount on each one, like I think 30, 30 and 20 or something like that. So, um, I mean, they don't have to be exactly even like they, you just don't want like 10 stitches on one and 50 on one and 10 on the other or 20 on the other one or something that would just make it, you want it to be a pretty, you want it to flow around. I mean, it's a triangle, but you want it to be able to flow evenly. You know, you don't want it to be super unbalanced. That's the only thing. I mean, it, there's not really a right or wrong answer about how many should be on each one, but you just want it fairly evenly distributed. Wouldn't you say, Claire, do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, I would just make sure that, you know, they're pretty much even, I think, you know, 
if one needle has five or 10 more or less stitches, it's probably okay. The fabric's gonna stretch around that corner and it's fine. Yeah. Um, and you may find like Darren has his needles in a triangle there, but you may find that you like using four to hold the stitches and then have a fifth needle for working. So it's more of like a square when you're looking at it. Yeah, it would look more. But the problem with that is then you have four, like here I only have three corners. But if you have a square, then of course you have four corners where you have more chance of like having that laddering. You have an extra opportunity to have laddering. That's why I think most people do three. But yeah, you certainly could do four and then it would look more like a square or rectangle shape. Okay. So let's go back to this one. So again, just start the double pointed needles. All you do is, um, so normally if I were knitting, I would be knitting like this, but I'm gonna to switch to my double point. So I'm not using this needle. So I might wanna just kind of tuck it out of the way, pick up a double pointed needle. And then this one is my circular needle. And you're just for one round, you're gonna be knitting with one of each. So you're going to knit, and then you'll just knit, um, you know, how many you want on each needle. Sometimes the pattern will tell you if there's a specific reason, it might tell you put 20 on one, 10 on one, and 50 on one or something. Um, sometimes with socks, you'll end up doing that. You'll have like 15 on one, 15 on one, and 30 on one or something. But if it's not telling you for a specific reason, then you just kind of want to even them out. However, you know, whatever the best, you know, kind of division of stitches could be. But yeah, it's really easy. I mean, we want it to be hard sometimes. We want like switching, like how do I switch to double points? That must be very complicated. You know, it's really not. Like you just pick up the one double point and just start knitting with it. Then before you know it, you'll have them all. I don't have enough working yarn with this because it's just a sample project, but yeah, you just, and then once you get enough stitches on that one, you just start knitting with the next one. Does that make sense or does it have more questions or no? I think that's okay. And remember that this class is being recorded. So you can go back and watch this all later. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to give you a time check. We have less than five minutes left, and I know we still have to show how to close up the hat. Okay, well, closing up the hat. So I actually, I didn't really get, let's see, let's look here. So the next, um, we're going to decrease. Um, we're going to, the very end, knit two together and repeat from the asterisk to the end, and you'll only have eight stitches. You're going to cut the yarn, leaving a long tail, thread the yarn tail through the remaining stitches and pull together tight. So I'm just going to show you on this one, but I didn't make one closing up the very top, but show you how to do it on this one. Because it's, it's another one, it's very easy. So pretend I only have eight stitches left on the very top. And you're going to slip those stitches. Um, you're going to take a long tail of yarn. And you're going to put that on a large eyed blunt needle. And then you're going to work that tail back through the remaining stitches. And you just can you see how I'm just transferring them one at a time? And then if you have a stitch marker, you can just pop that right off. You're just transferring your stitch markers. I'm sorry, your stitches just over one at a time. And let's pretend that's all. And then you just pull your tail all the way through you wouldn't normally have a long tail like this. This is too long.
and then you just pull it until it gathers up tightly like that. So are you able to see that with me not quite being quite ready for that part yet? I was just thinking that would be easy and we wouldn't So I do want to show you how to weave in the ends though. I think that was a little bit more. So you just put it through those needles, those stitches, and then get twisted here. And then you pull it together. It's kind of like cinching up like the top of a, like a pair of sweatpants or something, like just pulling a drawstring through. And it's going to look like that along the top when you do. And then you just take your um, working yarn and I like to take that just down through that center to the inside of the hat. Take it through, sorry, take it through the center and to the inside of the hat. Pull it very tight. I split my yarn there, so I'm going to unsplit your yarn. And then for weaving in the ends, see, I like to, you see these pearls, you can see kind of how they kind of make a wavy line like that. I like to go kind of down in one pearl and then back through another one. So are you able? So down through one, and up through another. And then go down to the next row. You don't want to pull this tight. You don't want to distort the front of your work. You just kind of, you don't want it to be loose, but you just kind of want to do it lightly. Are you able to see? Sometimes it's hard to see it on a video. And you want to go about two inches one direction and about two inches the other direction. And then you'll just cut that off. Um, just kind of snug to the edge of your fabric. And then that's all for weaving at the ends of the top. And weaving in the ends for the ribbing, let me show you that. So it's gonna bring your working yarn to the back side. I always wanna do this on the back. And if you did have like a gap or an opening, Sometimes I will, so if you kind of take it through your cast on edge like this, you can see right here, there's a little bit of a gap. I'll kind of bring it over here to kind of bridge that gap and then pull it closed and then go back to kind of, kind of make that kind of V shape and then I will go up one strand of the knitting. I kind of do it like this. I like to do it on the knit stitch because on the other side, of course, that's the purl stitch and it really doesn't show at all in that like little purl trench. up and then move over to the other row of the knit stitch and go down. So go up about an inch or inch and a half and down about an inch or two inches and, and then just cut that off flush. And you don't want to take that clear to the very end because you don't want that like little tail to pop out. And then that's weaving in your ends. So right. any questions about anything we covered? 
any questions at all. Okay, then, well, thank you for coming to class. If you do have questions later on, if you start making a hat, have any questions at all, feel free to contact me um, on Instagram or on TikTok. My username is Mr. Woolly Bear. It's M-I-S-T-E-R Woolly Bear spelled out. Uh, maybe Claire will put that in the, in the chat for everyone. Or if you wanna find me on Facebook, it's just my name, just my name. And if um, you send me a question, I usually try to respond within a day or two. I try to respond as fast as I can. So um, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions or let me know how you're doing. And if you make a hat, I'd love to see a picture of it so you can tag me in the picture or send it to me in a message or direct message be great so all right any other questions anything else i'm going to go ahead and put the uh hat pattern in the chat here one more time in case you need that and then hopefully we see you later this month we do have a couple days off but we've got two lace classes coming up one knit lace and one crochet lace later this month so we hope to see you there all right thanks everybody have a great night practice